everybody. Hey, Quinn, guess what? <laughs> hey, Quinn, where are you going? I'll be right back. Three hours later. Where did you go? <laughs> I feel like I just lost the ten pounds. Did you just evacuate your bowels? Evacuate my what? I just pooped. Oh, funny that you mentioned that. That's a part of your digestive system, which is exactly what we're gonna learn about today. Let's learn about our digestive system. Uh -huh. Your digestive system has two main functions, to change food into nutrients that our body needs and to remove waste from the body. And to do its job, the system needs the help from a lot of different organs inside your body. This includes your mouth, your stomach, intestines, your liver, as well as your gallbladders. Did you know it takes about one full day for your meals to go through the over 27 foot digestive tract? And during its trip, the food you ate is blended together with acids and digestive juices. Then it's squeezed and crushed until all the nutrients we need to live are absorbed in your body. Finally, the stinky leftovers, as well as billions of dead bacteria, are ready to exit your body. Yep, that means poop. Mm -hmm. That gets flushed down the toilet. So now, let's discuss what happens when you eat in the process of how it gets digested in our bodies. The first step in this process starts with your mouth. Your body starts the astonishing digestion process. The moment you take your first bite of a meal, that's right, it all starts there. Your teeth chomp your food, breaking it into smaller pieces. And when you eat, your saliva breaks down the chemicals in the food, and this helps make the food soft and easier to swallow. Our saliva also contains an enzyme that starts the chemical digestion of different kinds of foods. Your mouth also kind of acts like a refrigerator or a microwave. It will either help to heat your food or cool down your food until it's the right temperature for your body. Your tongue also helps out. It does this by moving your food around while you chew with your teeth. Now, when you're ready to swallow, the tongue pushes a small amount of that crushed up food called a bolus toward the back of your throat. It then goes into an opening called the esophagus, which is the second part of the digestive tract. The esophagus is kind of like a stretchy pipe about 10 inches long. Think of the esophagus as the tunnel that brings the dinner you just ate down from your mouth and into your stomach so that digestion can start. As well as the esophagus, the back of your throat has something called a windpipe. This allows air to come in and out of your body. And when you swallow tiny bits of mashed up food or liquids, a special flap called the epiglottis drops over the opening of your windpipe. And the epiglottis does this to make sure the food goes into the esophagus, not into the windpipe. And you may have felt your epiglottis work. See, if you've ever drank something too fast and then started to cough or heard someone say that went down the wrong pipe, well, that person meant that the liquid went down the windpipe by accident. This happens when the epiglottis doesn't drop down quick enough and you cough automatically to help clear your windpipe. And next, once the food has entered the esophagus, it doesn't just fall right into your stomach. Instead, muscles inside the esophagus move like waves to slowly squeeze the food through the esophagus. And this wave is called peristalsis. This process takes just a few seconds. The next step in the process is your stomach. Your stomach is connected to the end of your esophagus. It is like a stretchy sack shaped like the letter J. And your stomach does more than just telling you when you're hungry or when you're full. Your stomach is very important to the digestion of your food. Your stomach has three important jobs. One, it stores the food you've eaten, 
two, it helps break down food into a liquidy mixture, and three, it slowly empties that liquidy mixture down into your small intestine. Your stomach is filled with powerful acids that help break down food into even smaller pieces. And here is a crazy fact. Your stomach acid is so strong, it's able to dissolve metal. Wow. Ever hear your stomach growl? This is called borborygmic, and this happens all the time. But the reason that it's sometimes louder is when your stomach is empty and other food can't muffle the sounds as much. Did you know that your stomach can stretch and hold about four pounds of food at one time? Think of your stomach kind of like a mixer. It mixes and mashes together all the small pieces of food that you chewed and ate that went down your esophagus and turned them into smaller and smaller pieces. And it does this with the help from strong muscles in the walls of your stomach and something called gastric juices that also come from the stomach's walls. Gastric juices help with breaking down the food and also help kill bacteria that may have been eaten in the food that you ate. Your stomach is about the size of a tennis ball when it's empty. But when you have a huge meal, it can grow to the size of a football. Food will hang out in your stomach for about four hours or so. And as the food sits there, even more enzymes start working on breaking down things like proteins that our bodies use. And your stomach muscles mix and crush the food together with the gastric juices until it becomes a soupy mixture called chyme. And when this happens, the chyme is ready to be squirted into the small intestine. And this is where most of the digestion process happens. The main job for your small intestine is to absorb nutrients and minerals from the food you eat. 90% of food absorption takes place in the small intestine. The small intestine is the main digestion area in your body. Your small intestine is made up of your duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. And your small intestine is about 22 feet or 7 meters long and about an inch or two and a half centimeters in diameter. And if you think about this, you'd think that the surface area of the small intestine would be about six square feet, but that's wrong. It's actually about 2,700 square feet or 250 square meters. This is about the size of a tennis court. The small intestine breaks down the chime even more so your body can take in all the vitamins, minerals, proteins, carbohydrates, as well as fats. Pretend you just ate a piece of chicken. <laughs> the chicken pieces you ate were full of proteins as well as a little bit of fat. Well, the small intestine helps to separate the protein and the fats with some help from three other digestive organs. These are called the pancreas, the liver, and the gallbladder. The liver and pancreas help a lot with the digestive system. Your liver is a very busy brand organ in your body. And your liver, which is the largest internal organ in your body, plays an important role. In fact, it has about 500 different jobs. Think of your liver like a chemical processing factor. First, blood carries nutrients to the liver from the small intestine. Then the liver decides what to do with these nutrients. Your liver is also removing toxins that can be harmful to your body. It also recycles old blood cells as well as creates bile and other digestive juices. It then produces, stores, and releases glucose in your body. Glucose gives you energy. And next, your pancreas provides even more enzymes which help digest all different kinds of foods. And then we have your gallbladder, which is like a storage unit for all of the bile and enzymes created by the liver. The pancreas keeps them until they are required for the step in your digestion process. And once all of the nutrients have been absorbed in your small intestine 
anything that is left over is moved into the large intestine for any extra water to be removed. Your large intestine is basically the last part of the digestive system. Your large intestine includes the colon, appendix, cecum, and the rectum. Your large intestine is about five feet long. And your rectum is your food's exit out of the body as waste. Your large intestine also has a tiny tube that has a closed end coming off of it, and this is called your appendix. Doctors used to think that your appendix was useless, but now they think the appendix stores good bacteria, which helps your digestive system work better after eating poorly for a long time. And like we mentioned a bit earlier, after most of the nutrients we need are removed from the food you eat, there is waste left over, stuff your body can't use and must get rid of. This stuff needs to be removed out of your body. And I bet you can guess where it ends up. Well, here's a small clue. It goes out with a flush. But before it gets removed completely, it passes through a part of your large intestine called the colon. And this is where your body gets one last chance to absorb any water and some extra minerals into the blood. As water leaves this waste, the stuff that is left over begins to get harder and harder as it continues moving along until it eventually becomes a solid. That's your poop, which is also called stool or a bowel movement. And your large intestine pushes the poop into your rectum, which is the final stop in the digestive tract. The solid waste or poop will stay there until you're ready to go to the bathroom. When you go to the bathroom, you are getting rid of the solid waste by pushing it through your anus. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Cadence. And when you flush it all away, the journey that began from when you put that food into your mouth all the way until it can no longer provide your body with anything nutritional, well, the digestive process has been completed. And that's how the digestive system works. Hey, did you like this video? Hey, did you learn something new? Then don't forget to sub and smash that like button. And we'll see you on the next Hey, Guess What? Boom! Boom.